Hello, welcome back. Last time I showed my solution to Scaffold Printer, and with that behind me I can see the rest of the game. How much more is there? Turbocharge your brain! From Brain Pills Info. <laughs> okay, so we still get spam here in Avalon City, of course. Mail order depot 7cheap TLDs. Do you want to increase your mental abilities by up to 400%? Activate the previously unknown genius center of your brain? <laughs> Never be confused again. Find out about the small yellow pill invented by a schoolgirl that is causing a sensation in the medical community. Oblong Appeals, MD, World Institute for the Brain. I feel dirty having read that out loud. Hi, son. Existence Within by Orbis Hua. In some sense, all existence is existence within. Within a time, a place, a physical body. What are the limits of our minds? What might it be like to exist without a body, outside of oneself? This book attempts to answer these questions. Unfortunately, without direct experience, these topics can only be explored through conjecture and imagination. The real answers will have come, uh, will have come in time. There are new forms of consciousness out there waiting to be realized. All right, if you say so. Logic board. Hey, Cameron. We're almost there. We just need one more solution to tie all of these pieces together, a board that routes information to and from each neural processor, and one that we can manufacture at scale. Irina, side note for you. There are going to be a lot of these to power. A lot. Bring it on. I was wondering if we'd be doing like a super nightmare, or doing something fun, quick, like feeding some kitties or something. I'm guessing this is going to be a super nightmare. It doesn't come with a parts, uh, a, uh, 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 supplemental data. I've seen all the supplemental data at this point. Neural processor logic board. Ah, but it may come with a... Parts data sheet. Telos. And LP2. No, that's not it. This was back in Long Tung. That thing in Chinese, which I haven't had an occasion to use yet. Oracle Engine. I Ching, right? Yi Jing, or whatever. Okay, so this is not documented here. Got it. Uh, Logos data and Telos data are Xbus inputs connected to neural processors. Logos pump and Telos pump are simple outputs connected to neural processor circulatory pumps. Mesh data is an Xbus output connected to a neural mesh network. Neural processors Logos and Telos will occasionally... I feel like I've heard these words before, but I couldn't tell you what they mean will occasionally emit data packets consisting of 24 data values and one checksum value. Checksum? If the checksum matches the data, forward the entire packet to mesh data. The circulatory pumps on Logos and Telos should be... What kind of checksum? Additive? It's a pretty bad checksum, but what more are you going to do with this, uh, this sort of thing? So does that add up to 26... Well, am I forwarding it? Yes, this one gets forwarded. Okay, this is a storage challenge. I just gotta use two. Can I use move these? No, they're fixed in place. I can wire behind them. Oh no, I can't. I can't. Tabbed in nothing. What a weird circuit board. What is this? Uh. Oh, hey, look, this goes off the edge. Uh, so all these checksums match, but this one does not. Okay, so I can clearly see that 9 adds up to a lot less than what this is. 26. So is this add? 1, 4, 7, 16, 25, 34, no. Okay, so if it is, it, it's definitely not simply additive. All right, is there a checksum? To validate the checksum of a data packet, start with the first value, subtract the second, add the third, subtract the fourth, add the fifth, and so on. Okay. When reaching the final value, the checksum, add it. If the total sum is zero, the packet is valid. Otherwise, the packet has been corrupted and is not valid. Okay. So plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Uh, 24 data values and one checksum value. Plus, minus, 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 plus. Okay, so I don't have to do two pluses at the end. Got it. 
Circuitry pumps on Logos and Telus should be activated every 5 time units. When a data packet is received from a neural processor, activate the corresponding pump immediately and reset the delay until the next automatic pump activation. Okay, so I got Logos. So you do a 100 here. All right, so whoever's signaling on these needs to know whether something has come in before you go into your gen instruction and go to sleep. So those have to, the pump controls have to wait for the data. That's fine. Uh, and I can't idle at zero. I have to listen every tick, okay? Uh, so Telos came in, changed its phase. These two are in sync now. How did that happen? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So after this falls, Oh wait, I'm counting wrong. Those aren't those don't correspond to time units. Okay, so so here when this comes in, one, two, three, four, five later. Yeah, okay, okay, right. Yeah, the the width of this is less than the width of a time unit. That's what threw me off there. Don't feel like I have a picture of what I'm doing yet. Why not? Because um, I'm getting distracted by stuff. Okay, so what's mesh data? Okay, so. So these are the simple pins, sure. Okay, so pump logic is over here. I suspect I might be able to get away with this. I can't wire there, that's inaccessible to me, got it. All right, so it feels like something like that's gonna happen. Sure, let's just start writing some code. Uh, So if, oh right, and this actually narrows my wire channel to a single wire. Yeah, so I can't wire through there at all. Yeah, okay, so those all block me too. That's why I can't tab to get behind them. They're already soldered onto the board. Okay. Uh, so I need to store a lot of data. Twenty-five values. Okay. So, uh, gonna have to bank switch. It is always a super pain. Um, unless I wanted to try and pack digits, I don't want to try and pack digits. That sounds really annoying. Then again, no, that'd be fine. Which is more annoying, bank switching or packing digits? I think bank switching is... Bank switching is terrible. I hate it. All right. So, um, okay. Now, if you want to help out with anything, because there's room here. If you want to help out with anything, it's going to have to be real compact. Because I only get the one line to you. You could certainly... There are ways I could add another microcontroller here. Like I could do this and wire that like that and then be able to... Okay, so if, if you need a little bit of assistance, I can do it that way. But until I need that, let's not. Okay, so uh, 24 values. So I could like DST0, DST1, DST2, then write that and move on to the next one. Yeah, as I saw with, what's it called, uh, Scaffold Printer, avoiding bank switching is kind of a huge deal, so I'm going to try the digit packing approach. I just need to, since these are all single digits in these first few tests, I'm going to trust that they always will be. Uh, so, let's see how this would look. Uh probably just write 
Well, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. For, for now, I'll do this. Uh, you can't sleep. This is non-blocking, right? It doesn't specifically say, but it does have the negative 999s. Oh wait, no, those are Logos Telos data. Xbus inputs connected to neural processors. So this is blocking. If I'm blocking on this, which I have to, then you can't SLX to know whether you're pulsing or not. And also, these need to start at... Every five time units when a data packet is received. No, 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 no. So start in the sleep phase. The only reason these start in this phase is because this packet was received here. Okay, sure. So start out with four zeros and then a one. Then one, two, three, four zeros, then a one. Okay, great. So I got this weird thing going here where since I have a blocking input... Okay, so let's start with this problem. A blocking input needs to be able to report a status every time, which is going to mean you will ha... How will you know when this has finished its work? What you do depends on whether a blocking message has come in here or not. I'm going to just have to do some nops and tell somebody very quickly that a message has come in, so you need to wait for it. I think that's literally the only way, because otherwise... Yeah, that's the only way. I have to do it with timing. I'm pretty sure that's right. Because there's no way to sometimes communicate and sometimes not. And also wait for that communication in a single tick. Yeah, because you have to SLX. Okay, that's an interesting, extremely subtle uh, challenge to this um, X0, I guess. Uh, to this particular puzzle here. I wonder if all these little greebles on the edge of the board are randomly generated. I didn't notice if Vector Math Coprocessor had any. It did not. I didn't have an API for these, though. Maybe they're like different characters I can put in to change the shape of the board. Or maybe I just don't get access to that. Maybe it's a private API just like I would assume the visualization in here would be if there was one. Uh, okay, so before I even think about data, I need to figure out how you're going to wait for you. If a message comes in, whether I'm forwarding it or not, I must restart the pump. Okay, so as soon as a message comes in, oh, wait a second. data. Wait, mesh data is the output. Oh, that's what I keep confusing. Mesh data is the output. That's the big thing I'm missing. No, no, no. You sleep on Logos. Uh, well, it removes access to that, so I might want to do this. You sleep on Logos and somebody else sleeps on Telos, I guess. Oh, no, 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 no. There's no sleep. No sleep at all. Okay, so mesh data is the output. This flows right to left. Maybe that's what threw me off. So nobody sleeps. Got it. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can then just wait for a message from this. Okay, 
so since I oh thanks one um, since I know oh no I can't do that never mind uh, oh and also that's a simple pin wait yes that's a simple pin right yes <laughs> this looks nicer <laughs> It wastes space down here, though. If I if I want more components, no, this this does fit better actually. Maybe I don't know. Uh, that would let me move that left, which gains me nothing. Anyway, uh... what do you need to know? Hmm, I really want two separate dudes to keep track of their intervals on this. I would feel much better if each one had an individual microcontroller. So let's try and do that. Yeah, and then this will talk to those. And also that fits exactly and feels like it's designed to do that. Yes, okay, so you're the... Sp you split the input into these two. Uh, those default to zero, so I don't need to init anything. And I'll just have ack count up toward five. That's x one. Tech x one. Uh, one. Let's just say I'll send you a one if you need to restart your thing. Move four ack. Tech ack four. Wait four. Zero, one, two, three, four. Yes, okay. Tech act four. Uh, zero act gen p zero one zero minus add one. Okay, that sounds sensible to me. All right, so that will send, so that's gonna count from zero to four. Interruptibly, yeah, interrupting it to immediately do the pulse if you tell it to, but you do have to tell it something. So tell it zero to just do its normal pulse. Tell it one to interrupt that and immediately send one. And otherwise it's just gonna do its thing. Okay, that feels like a good design to me. Uh, you might be able to get a whole lot smaller. That's very possible. Uh, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, so, what you're doing... Really just... You don't need to know anything other than that... Uh, All you need to know, like, you need the timing for when you've... No, hold up. Activate your time units. When a data packet is received from a neural processor, activate the corresponding pub immediately and reset the delay until the next automatic. So it doesn't matter if it matches or not. I will know immediately. Okay, great. Uh... All right, so you're gonna send a status value to this. I'm going to assume that I'll never get a message on both of these at once, particularly because the spec doesn't specify what order to write it to mesh data in that case. So either Logos or Telos will tell me something or neither will, but never both will in the same tick. Okay. So what you get is, all right, yeah, here, TCP x1, zero. 
So you'll give me a negative one for Logos, positive one for Telos, zero for nothing. Uh, and if I'm going to do it that way, I'd rather do it differently. I'm going to go ahead and just make you an MC4000X right now. There's no reason for the inefficiency. And that lets me wire this a little more pleasingly. A little bit. There. <laughs> Not that it matters, but that's what I've chosen to do. That's the next next one. Um, TCP is just not suited for this. Tech X1. Uh, yeah, negative one for logos. I might change my mind on these values. Um, so if you get a negative one, uh, if you get a negative one, you move one to logos controller. Otherwise you move a zero. Uh, that works fine. Okay. Uh, it's maybe not the cleverest way to do it, but it will work fine. All right, so uh, I have, well, uh, let's make that dat. I won't be doing arithmetic on it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, now, oh, so essentially I do have to bank switch between reading from Logos or Telos. Annoying, but that's fine. Yeah, whichever one doesn't give me a negative 999. Oh boy. Um, yeah, that's extremely annoying. We haven't even gotten to the checksum stuff yet. I think it'll be fine if I pack everything into 100p14 with DGT, DST, whatever. And then I'll DGT to get it out, and that'll be fine, I imagine. Maybe I should check how much of a pain it will be to unpack this if I want to. That's probably worth checking. Uh, yeah, I should have a zero in there. Where's X2 gonna go? I don't know, somewhere. Uh, wait, what? What am I doing? Uh, SLX X2. Let's just say you get a zero. Move X2, X1. Uh, okay, and since I have the address line, I can test, uh, check where I am and know when to stop. Okay, so after all the data is in, Hold on, somebody has to check some. Okay, the check some can be a running thing as I read the data. Then I check it against the last value. Your job is just to read the value that I values that I've written here. And I dump them out here if they are okay, so so I'm doing twenty-four divided by three is eight. Okay, so I'm doing eight of these plus one full number. All right, great. What is it, X3? Um, with X3, dat, move dat ack. Did you, oh, so here's a big pain. Yeah, this is a big pain, isn't it? Ugh. Ugh. 
Gross. Yeah, so here's what's gonna happen. TGT zero. Move ack x zero. Move dat ack. See, I wanna do this. I'd love not to unroll this loop. Actually, I think I might be able to get away with that. That's few enough instructions. No, it's not. It really is not. Because now I want to tech x1. I'm actually not incredibly far away from this. I think I'm only one instruction away. Tech x1, um, 8. All I need is after this, a, uh... Okay, if somebody else could reset the address line to zero for me, then I could, uh... Oh, wait, no, I couldn't. Never mind. I need to only read this once. I can't replace this with the, the clearing the IO line because it's inside a loop. Yeah, so after this I need a uh, move x3, x0. That's really it. I just need that one instruction. Otherwise this fits. But these are all essential to the program. Right? Nope. This one's not. I can get rid of that. Okay, I can fit this by... Yeah, no, 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 no. I can't... Can't do that because that needs to be active first. Okay, so can I do, is, is there some kind of loop trickery magic I can do here? There might be. Okay, so... If I do this here and check if the value that I have just read is the checksum. Yeah, okay, I think with this trickery I can do it, right? And even have a line to spare? Okay, so... No, wait, I still need the minus jump loop. Alright, so how's this gonna work? Move x3 dat, so I read a value to dat. If my address is here at 9, then I just want to write that value directly. So I want to allow this move dat ack. I don't want to DGT. I do want to move ack to x0. I don't want to do any of the rest of this. What a gross hack. I think it works, right? Because you'll get awoken, you'll move that message here to reset your address to that, so I'll send you a zero to wake you up. Uh, you reset it to that. Read the first three-digit value. You are not at uh, address nine, so copy that to ACK, get the digit, move it there. Uh, copy that, get the digit, move it there, copy that, get the mint digit, move it there and jump to loop. Great. Uh, when it is 9, then, yeah, it's there in, oh, uh, by the way, this is, yeah, no, that's that's correct. Move that ack, move ack x0. It's a little bit of indirection, but that's necessary to save this many instructions. 
Yeah, so it just does those two things and falls through and goes back to sleep. Perfect. Okay. So, that's unpacking. What about packing? Packing might be harder. I have so little space. Yeah, okay, so the defining feature of this is perhaps the tiny, 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 tiny space that I get. In theory, I might be able to use this space more efficiently, but it'd be awfully hard to do anything along this communication channel. So I could change you back to an MC6000. Have some other values I could send you and do a little bit of work with them and return some value back here. So if in five lines of code, I could detect, let's see, and how many, how many lines of code would that effectively be? Uh, six lines. Okay, so this is, this empty line comes over. So tech, oh, by the way, this is Zach. Tech ack some other value. Oh shoot, but no, this does stuff unconditionally when I send it anything. Ah, but I could put a jump in there. Okay. Tech ack two plus jump loop. So that's four lines left to actually do something in the plus case for that. Okay, so I could get four lines of work on some parameter to a function call here, if that would help me with this. All right, got it. So, I still think this overall approach is okay. So I need to pack data in here. I need to check some. You're gonna be the bank switcher. You will forward information as necessary. I don't know if I can do, have you be the one to talk to this. It's currently unknown to me. Um, wiring is fine here, actually. I think. I get this controller and maybe one more here and that's it. Ah, uh, I have a wiring problem already because I have no XBUS lines that can escape here. Shoot. Uh, I could potentially move... Th no, no, I couldn't. All right, so if there's communication to you, the only way that will happen is like this. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's accurate. There's no way I can lose two pins off of this and still have it do its job. So there's no way I could do that and this and free up another column for things to fit. I mean, this can move left. Yeah, there's no reason I can't share the same address and other thingy line. This wire might be a reason. Even if I'd take out the bridge. So yeah, if you moved right and you moved left, I would maybe have space for another microcontroller packed in there. I don't know that I need one yet, though. I just have a hunch. All right, so the point of you... Oh, this is fine, actually. I think... Could be. Uh, oh, by the way, I have this wrong. Alright, I only need to check Telos if Logos has told me negative 999. That is accurate. Uh, so at this point I don't know who has told me what if I structure my code this way. Uh, 
that instruction space is looking awfully tiny for everything I know I need to do here, but maybe it'll be possible. Okay, so, uh... If I get a value, I need to remember who sent it to me, then 25 times send that value on to you. How? How do, how, does, how do you talk to you? That doesn't happen. Oh, that's a problem. Well, all that means is this controller's in the wrong place, and I can change that. In fact, doesn't this just wire better if I do it this way? Uh, well, that's in the way. Yeah, that's very in the way. So no, it doesn't. No, the opposite is true. No wire there. No wire there means if I'd accept the loss of one of your wires, which actually might work, then once again, I can get some space here. I kind of like that. Okay, so anyway, all this moves down here. My pins change. Um, X2 doesn't exist, but X0 now connects. Oof. Someone else is going to have to talk to that X1. Okay, so you're the one who has this connection and... I kind of hate everything. Uh... Oh, no. So this would have to come out like that. This would have to go like this. So this has Logos. This has Telos. X2 is connected to nothing. It has this. And technically it does have this, but you can't... I, I need another line. No, I do need the X2 to communicate to this. Okay, so I just cannot do that. It's impossible. So if that's impossible, did I like the other way better? Why are you all the way over to the left there? Well, because of bridging, because you need all your pins. Okay, so I have pin problems here. A lot of them. But can't I do without one? Why can't I do without one? Can't the thing downstream of here... Yeah, okay, so the... The problem with what I'm trying to do here is having this connection. That connection needs to instead go, go where? No, the only place is here. Okay, so let's think through the logic for a bit. This is, oh no. Uh, the logic is I must find out which of Logos or Telos is communicating to me at the moment. If neither, nothing over here needs to be engaged, but I need to tell this neither is communicating. Whichever one is communicating, I need to say, uh, okay, so in, I'm going to put into dat, I'm going to put an ack, I guess. No, okay, so this is ack. Into dat, I'm going to put... Uh, Okay, so let's say first one is logo, second one is Telos. I don't know how I'll wire this eventually, but um, if it's not Logos, then it's Telos. Telos means one. 
Oof. One dat. Wait, what? Okay, so if... If Logos, if that's what this is, is not negative 999, then Logos is the one that needs to wake up. If Telos is not, then I already have a problem here. Oh, gross. What I was envisioning here was uh, move... How many is this? 25 values? Well, 24 more after the first one. Move 24, ack. Uh, well, okay, sure. So do the loop once and then also do it 23 more times. Uh, loop, move... Um, some conditional would decide which of these... I don't know, let's just call logos x0 and the output x2 move x1, x2, okay, so move logos or telos onto something and then, ah, uh, okay, so <sighs> yuck Too much is happening. But everything has to happen. It's not going to be any other way. Be okay. So. Oh, dear. There. Problem number one. Bank switching Logos and Telos is hard to fit in this many instructions. All right, let me describe fully what I want this microcontroller to do. If there's a value on either one, read the other 24 values from that same one, send them somewhere downstream to process, and either that thing downstream needs to send a one or a negative one to this, or you do. Someone needs to do that, I figure it would be you because somewhere in you, you need the state of which thing you're reading from. And which thing you're reading from determines which value is sent here. And if it's neither, then you send a zero. And I think that's the whole idea of what you need to do, but how do I do that? Move X the act, tech act negative nine nine nine. Okay, so here's how I would at least figure out who I'm reading from. Tech act negative nine ninety nine minus move. Yeah, I don't even need to read Telos if Logos is not negative nine ninety nine or vice versa. Here, you go away, you're distracting me. Here, okay, so. For now, those are just what I'm gonna call these. Mix zero, ack, yeah. Uh, Take a Minus, move. The logos value one. No, negative one. Logos is negative one. Okay. Move one dat. Jump. Read.
That's a lot of instructions already. Well, I don't have to j Oh, I do have to jump. Don't I? I guess actually this becomes... <sighs> See, here I'm... Ah, I hate this because I have to keep that value around regardless of, uh... Okay, what about this? What if you were to receive two values and they were what Logos and Telos sent? You'd send back a one or a negative one, which you'd TCP on and then know which one to read from. And it would also send back the one value that it read. That sounds a lot more reasonable, actually, than this. I think I could maybe do that. So you'd know what to do. You'd help this out. It would compact your instructions. Okay, so I'm going to make a decision right now. Uh... I'm less than halfway through this puzzle, I'm going to say, and with that knowledge, I'm going to pick this up another day. I kind of have a trajectory here. I'm not confident yet that this is a good use of space, but I strongly suspect this is a better use of space than two of these and a bank switcher. Like, look how much of a nightmare this bank switcher is already. Yeah, just discriminating between different IO pins that I want to do the same action on is like the hardest thing in this entire architecture. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm okay with this. I could compact it a bit, but I don't think compacting that means much because there's only one line I can take anywhere. But I know a useful thing to do with that line now. Yeah, so you'll get a Logos value and a Telos value that will both inform you in what you need to do, and you can return that value to this and inform it what it needs to do. So there's useful work you can do in those few spare lines here, I think. Yeah, I think I can totally make that work. That sounds reasonable. Okay, so that's my plan for next time. Make that happen and then see what I can do upstream here where there's basically no space. Missing pieces. Somebody has to Count to three and do basically this in reverse. DST012, write it to that. Simultaneously check summing. I suspect I could have a little checksum helper here. This would just sum up numbers as they come in. So I'd, I'd split my output to two places, I guess. Sum up the numbers as they come in. Yeah, I could probably fit that checksum logic into one of these. That's optimistic, though. Yep, yeah, that's real optimistic. Might not happen. But assuming I could, then it's almost plausible that I could do this. Wiring looks terrible, though. But if these are all the connections I need here, which they're not. If they were, though, then I could... Uh, let's just do this now. Well, yeah, you can put a controller there, but it loses most of its connections already. Okay, so this would just have to be the one that needs the I.O. lines to this. Okay, yes, so what's nice about that is it lets me do this potentially for a little bit of extra help on something somewhere, somehow, that is impossible to wire to. Ugh! Hoi! <laughs> All right. So, super nightmare here. Uh, ridiculous space crunch. I get half a board. Basically, get half a board and some extra stuff that also has to happen over here. Alright, see you next time for the next bit of this, I guess.